Hey everybody, this is Robot here at Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. So in 2017, I had a very popular video covering the range of batteries available for your Vespa scooter. And at that time, I made a recommendation not to use the lithium iron or lithium ion batteries in your Vespa scooters. Well, things have changed. Back in 2017, we were selling ballistic and the battery tender batteries of that period. And they did have some teething problems with those batteries. First of all, if they were ever overcharged, sometimes they would get hot and swell and could cause a fire. And I thought that was something that wasn't a product that I really wanted to recommend. And I had firsthand accounts of some issues with them. And second of all, they are, they are not, um, they do, usually you will not recover if you drain them all the way down. And they still have that issue. There are some that do have a cutoff uh, electric circuit, but I'm looking for the best bang for the buck value and good quality, gives you a good service life. And I think I've found a good lithium replacement battery that works great in the Vespa scooters. So ScooterWest.com, we carry three different varieties of these parts and limited lithium uh, iron batteries that are suitable as replacements for the standard lead acid batteries found on nearly all power sport vehicles and scooters. Uh, this set of three will pretty much fit all the modern Vespas, pretty much most of the Piaggio products and some of the vintage uh, Vespas as well. And I'll go over them one by one you know, and how to install them on both a GTS and a Primavera later in this video. But I want to talk about some of the features of them. I think they're the, the good price point. They've, they deliver good service. Um, they also have a very, very low discharge rate. So if you don't use the scooter for several months, um, you could, you know, typically don't have a completely flat battery. One thing to keep in mind, if you do have a scooter that has like electric clock or the mobilizer system, that is a parasitic draw. So that puts an excess draw on the battery. And same with the under seat light. If you leave the seat open and you drain this battery all the way down and don't recharge it quick enough, it, you may not be able to recover the battery. Another technical thing that these batteries have is a built-in balance circuitry, something that many of the early lithium uh, iron and lithium ion re replacement batteries didn't have. And once they got out of balance, the batteries would never really recover or work right. And also the technology is, is um, improved a bit where these will crank better on colder days. And I have firsthand experience with the um, Shirai battery that ironically is still in my dirt bike. I ended up having it out in freezing climate and it was almost impossible to get started. The battery had a charge, it just doesn't put out the cranking amps. But the newer generation of lithium batteries, they tend to do a little bit better at the colder weathers. They still aren't quite as superior as the lead acid for the very, very cold. I'm talking sub-freezing temperature cranking. Uh, but typically, you know, several bumps of the starter will warm the battery enough where it will, and it will start generating the correct cranking amps to start the scooter. So that's just one minor pitfall of even the modern lithium replacement batteries. Well, first of all, the number one thing is they don't weigh anything. They're like toys. You could just, you know, you wouldn't do that with a lead acid battery, the seven amp size. I mean, they weigh less than half of what the standard lead acid battery. But let me open one up. And I'll go over each model one by one and what applications they fit. So I'll show you what they look like. Come with the standard post in the standard positions, which is a good thing. Uh, some of the batteries, like the early ones, like the ballistics, they were extra small and you had to make a foam uh, caddy to hold the battery. These things fit just like the standard um, um, lead acid battery. And you can push this little button. It does have a charge, a battery capacity indicator, which is a very handy uh, thing to have on there. If you don't have something like a voltmeter, it helps you out. Um, but there's three different variations. First of all, this is the larger one and it replaces a YTX 12 BS or a YTX 14 BS. So this is suitable for 
most of the Vespa GTS range, you know, the, the 200, the 250, many of the 250s, and all of the Vespa GTS 300s, all the way up to the latest GTS 300 HPE. It also will fit the, some of the Beverly or BV range scooters and the, the MP3 that uses the 14 amp size battery. So the normal 12 amp and power battery is a little taller. They come with these spacers that snap into the bottom of the battery. So it ends up shimming the battery to the, the correct size. So if you're replacing a 12 amp battery, the YTX 12 BS battery, you'd put a pair of them. If you're replacing a 14 amp uh, YTX 14, you would put all four of them. So it makes it fit in the battery tray correctly so it's secured and that's very important a lot of people just throw a battery in they connect to two terminals there's batteries vibrating and jiggling around and they wonder why your battery terminals come loose um, it's definitely pretty important to strap it down so some of the advantages of these lithium ion replacement batteries is when properly maintained and you don't allow them to drain all the way and you have a good charging system they can deliver 2,000 plus cycles or cranking um, cycles, and they're allowed to cycle a little bit more than the lead acid battery. A standard lead acid battery usually delivers about 350 cycles, so that's start cycles. Um, you know, you know, and if you have a, a much nicer lead acid battery, such as a, a AGM or just the standard sealed YTX 12 PS you can typically get 500 to 1,000 cycles. So these potentially can outlast the standard lead acid battery by double, which is a good thing and adds extra value to these, these batteries. So if you're looking for a replacement battery that will fit uh, pretty much the genuine buddy range of scooter, uh, many Kimcos, and it, pretty much any scooter that uses a y, YTX 7 ABS or a YTX 9 BS battery, we have this one available. And the part number on is 490-2504. And you can look in the description for the, the part numbers. And I forgot to mention the one that replaced a 12 amp hour. That's a 490-2516. So that's the heavier duty one. Physically, they look like the same size battery. And they don't come with quite as many shims because the seven amp battery, essentially that this replaces, it's exactly this size. So it just drop, it's a drop in replacement. You don't need to use any of those uh, plastic spacers. They aren't included with this, this battery. So the difference between this battery is it has uh, a lower cranking amps, you know, pretty much directly replaces the smaller size battery. And if you're replacing a nine amp battery, it includes a, a set of foam spacers so you put a pair of these on both sides and it will fit into the standard YTX 9BS battery tray. So those are only used if it's replacing a YTX 9BS battery. So pretty much same features, has a little power meter right there. So if you have a Primavera, um, a Liberty, pretty much any of the 50ccs or the 150cc three valve newer uh, Vespas, pretty much 2015 and newer for any of those scooters. Uh, this would be the correct battery that replaces it. So it replaces the YTX7 LBS, which is what's found in the Liberty and the Primavera and Sprint, and also replace a YTX4 LBS and a YTX5 LBS, which are commonly found in many 50cc scooters, such as like a, a Yamaha Zuma 50 or you know, any of the other little 50s, like a, a Malaguti yesterday. It's not gonna fit in a Vino 50. I know that uses a different type of battery, but it's a much smaller range battery, and it works pretty much in the same size as the four amp, the YTX4. So it's a very short battery, and it includes various spacers that shim up the, the space. So if, it's, if you're gonna put it in a Primavera, you're gonna wanna double up your spacers underneath. And again, it's got the little voltmeter right here. So even though these lithium batteries have a much slower s discharge, you know, they don't lose 1% every day like a lead acid battery. It's more like a half a percent every day or some, somewhere in that range. It still is recommended if you don't use your scooter frequently or as your everyday transportation to have some sort of battery tender automatic style charger. In past videos, I've covered the latest range of 
battery chargers that we have available at scooterwest.com. There's four different ones that we have. Um, make sure you get one that's lithium compatible. So pretty much um, if you buy the latest battery tender Junior 800 that we sell at scooterwest.com, there's a little push button that changes the voltage between the lead acid technology batteries and the lithium. You can use the older chargers as long as it doesn't have the high voltage desulfate mode, which would be found on that much larger Optimate charger. Um, any of those modes will damage a lead acid battery and it could possibly overheat it and cause it to swell. So keep that in mind. And you could do that. You could check to make sure it doesn't have a feature like that with a voltmeter if you're unsure on the older chargers. Um, pretty much if you use an older style battery tender, they pretty much have a peak voltage of, I would say it's around 13.2 or 13.5. So it won't ever bring one of these lithium batteries up to its full state of charge. It will bring it up to about 70%. If you have a battery tender or the Optimate charger or the Nuoco one with the lithium, if you set it to the lithium mode, it's gonna bring the battery all the way up to a full state of charge or just under it actually, because these batteries usually store best at like a 70 to 90% state of charge. If you're at the very top where you charge at about 15 volts, you know, or 14.7 volts, uh, that brings them up to 100% state of charge and they don't quite um, last as long. But if you keep them under charge, you know, such as under 12.8 volts, um, then that will also affect the life because they won't be at their full capacity. So pretty much if you buy one of these, put it in the mode, it's completely automatic. You don't need to think about how many volts and what it does, but I'll show you some more technical stuff when we get one of these batteries installed. So here I have a 2021 Vespa GTS 300 HPE. And it's pretty much the same steps for any GTS or GT200 all the way back into the early 2000s. In the center mat, there is a cover, it either has Phillips screws or these newer models use the Torx style screws, so I'm using a T25 Torx driver. If you look in the toolkit of the glove box of your scooter, it will have the correct tools to change a battery. So remove the four fasteners, hold the floor mat in, then lift the mat up, and make sure all your clips stay in place. Those are pretty easy to pop out of place. I see them missing sometimes. And as you can see, it's got the standard lead acid battery, the AGM Uwasa lead acid battery, which is a, a fine battery, but when it comes time to replace it, you may want to consider the lithium replacement. And start by disconnecting the negative terminal. And this scooter also has the battery tender lead included on it. And you pretty much just sandwich the negative with that negative right there. And then you'll disconnect the positive terminal. Next, we'll get a T30 Torx driver. And remove this battery strap here. So this is a T30, it's the next larger size or two larger size, or two sizes larger on the Torx fastener scale. And pretty much just pull this battery strap. You can even leave the screws in there. This one's a little difficult to get out of the way. That's your main fuse. FYI, if you ever accidentally reverse the battery terminals or do something like jump start and reverse, it will blow the fuse that's located in there. A lot of people look at the fuse panel that's in your glove box and the scooter still doesn't start. Nothing comes up. That's your main 30 amp fuse. So now you got the battery terminals out of the way, you can just pull the battery directly out of the, the tray and it pulls straight out. Always make sure the tray is present. Uh, it's got the side stand safety switch. I see a lot of people, they'll pull the trays out because they want to fit a different battery in there. Well, at that point, the battery's just sitting on the metal of the frame. So we'll take the lithium battery. This is part number 4902516. And we'll take the spacers. As you can see, it's a little short compared to this replacement here. So we'll snap these uh, spacers into the bottom of the battery. So go ahead and remove that uh, protection cap on 
the, the positive terminal. You're going to have the hardware. And one nice thing about these batteries is I've never seen a failure of them. The only reason they fail is if you allow them to um, drain all the way down to zero or if you overcharge them. Um, but if there is a failure, oftentimes the manufacturer will take care of it you know, for I think up to one year. Usually we can get a warranty replacement. But just keep in mind if you drain it all the way down to a very low voltage and it doesn't recover, um, you may be looking for a new battery. So that is one downside of these. Uh, lead acid batteries, sometimes you can recover them when they're drained all the way down to that zero volt state. You know, for instance, you leave the ignition on or just let the scooter sit so long that it never recovers. So go ahead and drop the uh, battery back into the tray. So typically with the battery tender lead, I would put the the ring terminal of the battery tender first, and then the terminal, the much larger terminal of the scooter second. I see people do it the other way. Um, you're just gonna get a better uh, connection, you know, for the cranking amps if you have the, the, the battery terminal versus it going through the ring terminal of your charging lead. So go ahead and take your Phillips, go ahead and tighten that down. Make sure it's rather tight and you could tuck that uh, this fuse holder you know right right between the battery would be okay right there and then your negative just goes on to the negative post right here and sometimes you have a little spark that's just uh, the capacitors charging up inside the computers and electronic parts of the scooter Again, make sure that's nice and tight. And put your battery strap. Sometimes you gotta snake that around, make sure you don't pinch any of the wires. And sometimes if the battery is a little loose, like right now it's pretty tight, there's no problems with not moving around. Um, you could fabricate some type of foam. There is a foam underneath this, but sometimes it's just slightly too thin. So that's always something you could add, but it's nice and tight. That's very important that you don't wiggle the battery around too much. It doesn't vibrate too much. Um, and before we put the cover on, it's always handy to have a voltmeter because if you have an older GTS that has like a charging problem where it's overcharging the battery, you may end up ruining your battery. So I'll set this to volts. And if you have a meter that doesn't do auto ranging, you know, you want to set it to the 20 V range, 20 volts DC range if you're wondering. So pretty much I'm going to put the two terminals right across the two and you can see it's sitting there at 13.2 and that's the standard floating voltage. There's much higher than a lead acid battery when it sits. So a lead acid battery that's fully charged would be about 12.8. Uh, these are 13.2 which is about 70 percent charge or even higher um, at um, at 100 percent charge. And the goal is you want to make sure it never goes over 15 volts. A standard charging system should, should peak out anywhere from 14.4 to 14.7 volts in my experience. Um, so I'll turn the scooter on. You can see the voltage drops. Cranks nice and fast. And you should see the voltage come right up. And that's the charging system charging the scooter. And pretty much, you know, being a brand new scooter, it's never going to really exceed 14.4 usually is what these new ones do. So it's charging just fine. It's not doing anything abnormal like hitting 15 volts after running for a little bit. Um, but we know we're all good. And we can put the battery cover back on and we're all set. So pretty much the same steps on a Primavera or a Sprint 150. The little mat is held by four fasteners. And just like the GTS, there's a battery tray that's integral with this uh, frame right here in the, the cup. Uh, this scooter doesn't have a battery at the moment. And there's also a battery strap that goes across the battery after it's in the battery is installed. So the one main difference with installing the battery on um, a Sprint or Primavera is if you drop this into the tray, it's going to drop way too far down in there. So that's too far down into the, the tray. So we're going to need to put 
a couple spacers, pretty much the whole set of spacers that fit this battery into the... So you take these foam blocks, go ahead and adhere them to the corners of the battery. The one other thing that's cool about these batteries are great for vintage bikes because they're very small and they have a tremendous amount of cranking amps over to those old fashioned um, maintenance style lead acid batteries. So you could just put one little battery like this and it will crank over a PX200 uh, without issue. So pretty much just set up like that. And now if we drop it into the tray, it's sitting at the right height. So go ahead and pull the terminals off. Same steps here. You want to put the square or rectangular nuts underneath those two terminals. And start with your positive terminal here. And if you have the battery tender style leads, pigtails on your battery, start. You put the battery pigtail uh, ring terminal on the top and then the main terminal to the battery on the bottom here. And you can see that nut kind of wants to kick out a little bit because the scooter is tipped a little bit. And then the same with the negative terminal. Go ahead and tighten this screw down. Make sure that lead is out of the way of these two uh, areas where the strap goes. So pretty much you'd put the strap right across here. It only goes on one direction. It catches those two holes. And go ahead and tighten that all down and um, put the battery cover back on. Make sure the clips are back in place, unlike this one right here. So here you go. Cranks right up, no problem. And that's pretty much how you do it on the Primavera. Very, very similar to the Vespa GTS, but a different size battery. So if you're looking for a longer lasting battery for your scooter that's also lighter weight and has some other extra advantages of draining much slower when you're not using it, consider one of these lithium batteries. You can look on the Scooter West website. The part numbers are 490-2501 and 2504 for this one here, the midsize one, and the largest one for the GTSs and other large Piaggio products, 490 dash 2516. Thanks again for watching. This is Robot here at Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West. And things change year to year, so sometimes my older videos don't really uh, have up-to-date information on the latest technology of some of the products we offer and sell at Scooter West. Until next time, this is Robot here, Vespa Motorsport. Thanks again.